and the Irish have now scored on their last three possessions to lead at 21-10. Hendricks kick, bouncing around, scooped up at the 15-yard line by Bob Damon. And he gets to the 30. Penn State coming in with the nation's top scoring defense. Notre Dame's opponent next week, Miami, number two. The most points, again, Alabama put 17 on the board against the Nittany Lions, and the Irish have surpassed that total here in the second quarter. And they've done it because the offensive line thus far of Notre Dame has dominated the line of scrimmage. That has been the difference thus far in the game. Chris Zorich is back in there at nose tackle. On first and 10, Blair Thomas running into bowl car after two. John Dockery, your thoughts on the performance so far of Tony Saka? You know, Jim, I've been watching him, and uh, I've been watching Joe Paterno because remember before the game he said we would see both quarterbacks, Tom Bill and Tony Saka. He has not gone near Tom Bill. Tom Bill still has his jacket on, so obviously it's Tony Saka all the way at this moment. Second and eight. Saka now. Pass batted down. Bob Dahl, his second tip of the day. I'll tell you, they do a great job of getting in throwing lanes. Dahl and Alm in particular, the two defensive tackles. And they they really kind of mirror the quarterback. As soon as they feel, number 93, watch them. As soon as they feel they can't get to the quarterback, they just mirror him. He's got two guys on him, and he still gets the hand up. Looked like it hit him right in the elbow, too. You don't know, you never know how many touchdowns those kind of plays save. Third and eight from the 32. McDuffie in motion. Here comes the blitz. Terrell coming in. And Saka is wrapped up by Bolkar. Penn State will have to punt. Ned Bolkar right here makes his seven tackle of the day and we said it's his kind of game he is in his element it's a play action fake he reads it go steps up inside but still has just enough speed to put the stop on Saka but you got to think that Ned Volkar is playing this game with a big smile on his face he loves it Elkowski to punt for the second time blocks fielded by Eilers at the 50 and to the 48-yard line. Guess who blocked it? Anthony Johnson doing it all. Man who scored the last touchdown for the Irish coming in, getting the hand on it. Just incredible to me. Number 22 will come right up the middle. But what makes Notre Dame special on special teams is they play their best guys. Ordinarily, Anthony Johnson would be uh, sitting on the bench resting on the punt team. But not at Notre Dame. They want their best players on the field on punts and punt block. And that was all effort and determination by Johnson. Snap was a little bit low, which held up Helkowski. That's the third punt this year he's had blocked. First and ten from the 48. Rice tackled by Collins. Really the first time today that Tony Rice has not had running room. Everything Penn State does on defense starts with that man, number 31, Andre Collins. And they ask him to do a lot. They ask him to rush the passer, to fight off guards and centers, to play inside, to play pass defense. And he has done all extraordinarily well this entire season. He's gone over 100 tackles on the season today. On second and 11, setting up the screen for Johnson. Johnson trips into his own man, Tim Ryan, and picks up only about five. Well, it was a nice play, too, there by number 27 on defense, Gary Brown, their strong safety. They call Brown, or the strong safety position, the hero at Penn State. And they require him to do an awful lot. And Gary Brown has brought a lot of speed to that position for Penn State. Football at the 44-yard line, third and six. the middle Derek Brown incomplete should have had that 
that one. That was the one that keeps the drive alive, too. A perfectly thrown ball by Rice. Right in the numbers of Derrick Brown. First incompletion for Rice in four, four attempts. Bring in now Jimmy Sexton to punt. Alternating Sexton with Craig Hendrick. He is their pooch punter. McDuffie standing at the 12. Oh, boy. Ooh. That pooch didn't work out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Wow. Only 19 yards. Looks like one of your nine irons. Mm. Yeah, I've done that a few times, that's for sure. And you might hear an ovation. It's for Tom Bill coming onto the field. A quarterback change made here with 2.29 left in the second quarter. Bill replaces Tony Saka. the 25, first and 10. Blair Thomas will lose yardage. He'll lose four on the tackle by Bob Dahl. Tom Bill opened this season as the Penn State starting quarterback, but after the second game, he was suspended for public intoxication. He did not dress for two games, was suspended, but has worked his way back on the team. Joe Paterno and Tom Bill have admitted the youngster has a drinking problem and the school is helping him recover. Second down, 13. Bill with Thomas out in front. Still going. You know, in, in spite of the problems that Tom Bill has had, and they've been well documented here in State College, Pennsylvania, this guy is really looked upon as the leader of this offensive unit. He gives this team a spark. His, his gregarious style, the way he plays quarterback, he plays a little bit like Joe Cap. Doesn't have the, the most accurate arm in all of college football, but he'll run, he'll throw short passes, he'll do whatever it takes to help this team win. Third and eight. Bill is run down by Scott Kowalkowski. And you see Notre Dame calling for its last timeout. One minute. One minute left before the intermission. Penn State will have to putt into the wind again. Back to the Irish. The home of the Nittany Lions, named for a former governor, James Beaver, some 100 years ago, and a founder of this school. 21-10, Notre Dame about to get the football back as the Nittany Lions will punt into the win. And Notre Dame will have one minute, but no timeouts remaining. And Denny Johnson broke through last time for a block. Oh, this one was partially blocked again. Fielded by Bellis at the 48-yard line. Scott Kowalkowski. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right up the middle both times. First was Anthony Johnson. And number 37 right there in the middle of your screen goes right around the center very quickly. Runs through the up back. Now, the up back should prevent that. But he ran right through the up back, reached the long paw over to make the stop. See how quick Kowalkowski, number 37, gets off? And Andre Collins, number 31, has got to get into more of his body to prevent that from happening. From the 48, first down, Rice rolling and throwing and through the hands of Ismail. Rocket had a shot at it. Time to announce this week's Toyota Leadership Award winners, the team players who have been singled out by their schools. Today's game team leadership winners, Brian Chismar from Penn State, Brian, a marketing major from Swissvale, Pennsylvania. And Frank Jacobs from Notre Dame. Frank, an American Studies major from Highland Heights, Kentucky. Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Frank Jacobs out with an ankle, out with a broken ankle against Air Force. But remembered here today. And on second and 10, Rice throwing for Eilers incomplete. She was talking to the Jay Haas, the special teams coach at Notre Dame, right before the game on the field. He said with the win, he thought his field goal kicker, Hackett, could put it in from 45 to 50 yards. And, and to do that, to get him in the range, they'd need to get the ball down to around the 30-yard line. 
and they have 44 seconds remaining to do it. Now it's third down now, third and 10. See number 14 in there, Ray Griggs is an extra receiver. Eilers as well, Ricky Waters at the bottom of your screen. Quarterback draw, and Rice breaks the tackle, gets the first down. That was Tony Rice on that play. He should have been stopped about three yards shy of the first, but he gains 13 instead. You know, yeah, that should be a four-yard gain. It really should be, and it should have been fourth down. Rice, 86 yards rushing in the first half. His top game of the year, 99 yards rushing against Southern Cal. Incomplete in the area of Derek Brown. And again, the 30-yard line is about the key. They have to get to at least the 30 to give themselves a reasonable shot for that man, Hackett, to kick the, uh, to kick the field goal. Long of 46 on the year, Jim. Pat coming up at halftime. We'll update everybody on all the scores and highlights. Greg Gumbel. Mike Francesa will have a few thoughts about his Heisman candidates. Second and ten. Rice goes down at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by George Kidwell, backup linebacker. And now they rush onto the field. And it's going to be a long field goal to Ted. Penn State has to get those hands up because this ball will come out of their low. This is Billy Hackett, 54-yard attempt. Sexton on the hole. Oh. Boy. That was D'Onofrio, I believe, who was offsides there. Mm. It's interesting, Notre Dame has made a change in its field goal kicker. They've let Hendrick kick early in the year, and now it's Hackett. You know, it might have been the center's head there that moved him off, and he's not allowed to make that move before the ball. It really shouldn't have been a penalty. Red ball, encroachment, defense. The clock will start on the snap, on the snap. That should not have been a penalty. Drew him off sides. 49 yards. The attempt will be now. With Billy Hackett. Never a chance. 21-10, the clock runs out on the first half. Notre Dame in front. Now let's go back to our New York studios for Greg Gumbel, our host of the College Football Report. Take it away, Greg. It is really going down to the wire. Now, Mike Francesa still has his ballot sitting here, not filled out yet. Uh, why? What's the, what's the reason? I can't figure out who the best player is. Maybe you can. <laughs> no, there are, uh, by general acknowledgement, five finalists right now. Let's go through them. Major Harris at West Virginia. Has he fallen out of the picture? I think he has. He just hasn't had the impact this year that he could have. All right. How about Emmett Smith down in Florida? Emmett had the big game against New Mexico, Greg. Overall, I don't think he's right now in contention. He had a very solid year, but he won't win it. All right. Now, there's a quarterback down in Houston that I think, in my personal opinion, should be the Heisman winner today, and that's Andre Ware. When you look at those numbers, Greg, if you're looking for the numbers guy this year, Andre Ware is your man. Anthony Thompson has had probably a better career than everybody else, but is his performance this year going to be enough to do it? He's steady, unspectacular, needs a big game after last week's record-breaking game, needs a big game against Illinois. All right, and then we come down to, I guess, would be the front-runner, Tony Rice. The controversial candidate. Doesn't have the stats. Everyone talks about the wins and losses, the leadership. But when I was filling out my All-America team this week, I couldn't pick him as the All-America quarterback. How can I give him the Heisman? So how are you going to fill this out? We'll wait till next week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Second half, just seconds away between Notre Dame and Penn State. Thank you for... One ten. The Irish have spread the wealth. Tony Rice, Ricky Waters, Anthony Johnson have all scored touchdowns. I'm Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden. John Dockery is on the sidelines. Pat, the first half performance offensively for Notre Dame starts right up the middle, does it not? They have been unbelievable right up the middle. The most simple play in football is running your fullback right over the center and their guards. And they have been, done a sensational job in the first half of doing that. Watch the center here again. Mike Held, he gets some help from number 52, Tim Ryan. And they just blow Jim Dieter back five or six yards. And the special teams have been awful 
awfully solid down the middle as well. Scott Kowalkowski, number 37, he's going to jump right around the center, run over the up back Andre Collins, and block the second punt of the first half by uh, Kowalkowski. So Notre Dame leads it 21-10 over Penn State. We're about to get underway for the second half. We'll be right back with that after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. GMAC, the official sponsor of America's dreams. And by the makers of Tom's, the sodium-free antacid that's rich in calcium. Well, temperature now in the 20s as we get set for the second half. Notre Dame and Penn State. There's a lot of wind. Penn State may have to throw the football. John Dockery asked Joe Paterno how that would affect his team. Well, we'll have to if we can't do, you know, if, if, they, if they score another one, we're going to have to throw the football regardless of the wind. But I hope we can hold them and uh, see whether we can start to just peck away at this thing. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Now, at the start of the game, Penn State won the coin toss and elected to defend the goal to the east. So that gave Notre Dame the choice for the second half. The Irish will get the football here in the third quarter and will have the wind at their backs in the final quarter. Give his smile. Will return if they kick it to him. He's standing at the eight. Bobby Samuels is holding the ball on the tee for Ray Tarassi. Tarassi kicks it this miles way from the six. And the rocket is stopped at the 29-yard line. In a very important series for the Penn State defense, trailing 21 to 10. They need to set the tone right here and get the ball back with the wind at their backs. Some of the stats from the first half, the field position starting point, Notre Dame, 42-yard line. Not bad. Well, the difference, yeah. second quarter. Now from the 29 on first and 10, first play of the third quarter. It's the Rocket oh. breaking the tackle and picking up 12 to the 41-yard line. Willie Thomas hit him first, but Gary Brown and D'Onofrio made the tackle. Now for first half possessions, Notre Dame punted, then three straight drives for touchdowns, a punt and a missed field goal at the end of the second quarter. A quick first down here. Waters now in a tailback. Waters up the middle for nine, maybe ten. You know, in the play before this, we saw Ismail out of the backfield run right over Willie Thomas. And it's incredible about Ismail. He's 5'10 and 170 yards, but they say he's their most physical runner. And that's what Lou Holtz likes about him. That's why he puts him in the backfield from time to time and tosses him the ball. He's in a slot right. Tony Smith wide to the right on second and one. Anthony Johnson, well, nothing there. Andre Collins in on him first. Andre Collins is the soul of this defense for Penn State. It all starts with this guy right here, number 31. He'll come into the middle of your screen. Good charge again by the offensive line. Giannetti, number 85, disrupts the rhythm. And then Andre Collins wraps up Anthony Johnson. And then Schoenwell finishes him off. Good team defense, his eighth tackle of the day. One of 19 children. His brother, Jerry, is a backup tailback. Third and one. Tony Rice for the first down. And corralled down by Sherrod Raines. But another five yards for Tony Rice. He's up to 90 now for the day. Well, what a rushing attack it has been for Notre Dame today, and really all season. They've had a lot more success to their left and running up the middle. But when they've run the most basic play in the football, just give the ball to the fullback right over the center. First and 10 from the 44-yard line of Penn State. Running it with Ricky Waters. Notre Dame just blowing them off the line of scrimmage here on the opening drive of the third quarter. 
That was another nine, maybe ten yards. And we said at the very beginning of the broadcast it was going to be a lineman's game. The offensive line of Notre Dame has been all of that today. They've been sensational. The right guard right here blocking Collins of Notre Dame. Watch as he comes off the ball. It's 52 Ryan who just blocked, ties up Collins five, six yards deep in the secondary. It was a first down for Waters. Now Rice, only a yard to the short side of the field. That side of the field belonged to D'Onofrio and Gary Brown. We are talking about Tim Ryan on that block just a moment ago, Jim. He is a guy that has a remarkable knack of being able to pull and adjust and find linebackers and, and uh, defensive ends. Number 52 right there in the middle of your screen. He's done a great job of that all year. He pulls, he adjusts, and he finds the right guy to block. Second down and nine. Ismail back in at tailback. They run it with the rocket. Look out if he gets the corner. Down to the eight-yard line. 26-yard run by Rakib Ismail. And look who made the stop downfield. It was Andre Collins, the inside linebacker. And again, they talked about him being a physical player. Anthony Johnson, number 22, picks up a block. He runs by Dean Brown, picks up a block by his wide receiver, number 82, Pollard. And again, the well-timed block, the nice cut off it, but it was a saving tackle by Andre Collins. Ball is at the seven-yard line. First and goal. The pitch gets away from Waters. And he wisely bats it out at the 18. Gary Brown was in on Rice as he was trying to make the pitch. He led Waters too much. Gary Brown is a guy who's played pretty well, or played pretty well in the first half. Number 27. And he forced Tony Rice to pitch the ball much earlier than he wanted to. That was a nice play by the strong safety, Gary Brown. A loss of 10. Second and goal from the 17. Here they come around on the reverse with the rocket. Willie Thomas bumps him out inside of the five. And it was 295 pounds of Tim Grunhard who really knocked over two or three guys right here from the slot formation. You're going to see Ismail. They use him in a lot of different ways in the wishbone. But watch number 75, Grunhard, who just runs right through Willie Thomas, number 25. But again, that's the problem with defending this team. This smile lines up in the backfield. He lines up in a wishbone, eye formation, in the slot. You always have to know where he is. Now third and goal from the four. Rice intercepted and then dropped. Oh. Penn State football. Dieter had the interception. The ball was free, and it was recovered by the Nittany Lions. Remember the Alabama game when Rich Schoenwolf intercepted number 72 right in the middle of your screen. Jumps up, tips the ball, and that's a nice catch by the nose tackle. Then he fumbles it. He had possession, then he fumbles it. And there's about three or four blue jerseys around to make the recovery. But Dieter made an interception this game. Schoenwolf made one against Alabama. I think Dieter was so surprised. I'm not really sure he had full possession of it. He was bobbling around until the ball finally popped loose. So Penn State takes over from the two. Bill is the quarterback. Blair Thomas. Blair Thomas for 14 yards. Tackled by Stan Smagala. Let's take another look at the interception by Jim Dieter, number 72, right there in the middle of your screen. And the key, Jim, is obviously whether he has full possession of it. He tips it there. Still tipping it. And then it was Grunhardt who actually knocked the ball away from him. That 
is actually slow motion. I actually thought he did have possession, and Grunhard knocked it away. First and ten. Here's Jerry Collins. He fumbles back. Picked up by Notre Dame. Jerry Collins just inserted for Blair Thomas, the younger brother of Andre Collins. Fell over his own man, the ball popped loose, and Smagala was there. With Bob Dahl, number 93, who really caused all the big pile of bodies there that caused the fumble. But Blair Thomas, I think, got hurt at the play before, and that's why Collins came in. Now from the 14 of Penn State. Ricky Waters slashing and picking up four yards. D'Onofrio on the tackle. Well, if Penn State is going to get back in this ball game and eventually win it, their defense again must stop Notre Dame from getting seven points here. They had the turnover just a moment ago, but they need another one. Second and six. Smith at the bottom of your screen. Ismail in the slot. They run it left. On the option, Rice will keep it. Only a yard. Kidwell and Andre Collins on the tackle. George Kidwell and Andre Collins. Kidwell, number 91 for Penn State, did a great job of fighting off the block of Anthony Johnson that time to make the play. Kidwell has played very well in this game. Last team to score after a takeaway from Penn State was Virginia in the first quarter of the first game. Now the third down play. Rice leans for the first down. You know, he forces you to stretch the defense so much and defend the perimeter that as soon as he sees a soft spot over the middle, he'll cut it right back. And that's Jim Dieter, the nose tackle for Penn State, who he has been getting double teamed all day long. Somebody, a lot of bodies flying around on the inside when you're running that many plays inside. Again, it's Helton against Dieter, number 72. And he got rolled his ankle. It looked like he got his ankle rolled up on the backside. Tony Rice trying to stretch it out for every last inch. They're measuring for the first down. We'll take a break at Penn State. The stadium behind me, they're still working on Jim Dieter, the man who made the interception only moments ago. And this is even more of a problem for Penn State because some of you may recall a few weeks back against Alabama, the backup nose tackle George Akindo uh, was injured. He's not on the team right now. He's still getting over those injuries. May never play again, but Jim Dieter now going off the field. We'll try to get you an updated report on him. Jim and Pat? You're right. Akindo, Doc, was advised not to play football again. So now they're down to their third nose tackle. And the way Notre Dame has been running the ball right over their center, Mike Helt, that is a very key position. While we were away, they measured for the first down. And Rice did indeed stretch far enough for it. So it's first and goal. Todd Berger comes in to replace Dieter. Now Rice faking into the line and picking up a yard. Sherrod Range and Chismar. And again... is down in what is called their four down zone. They figure with a lead of 21 to 10, they can have four runs. It's second down now, so they have three runs remaining to try to pick up those three yards to the end zone. We told you at the start of the day there was a big snowstorm this morning. The Flurries have returned. Second and goal from the three. Out of the wishbone, they give to the Rocket. And Ismail somersault short of the touchdown. Amazing thing about Ismail, as we said, 5'10", 170, but you don't have to be 220 pounds to be a physical back. He is a physical player even at the 170 pounds. He's not afraid to run inside and bounce off linemen and linebackers. Now third and goal from the one. 
Rice has scored one touchdown today already. Here he keeps and falls in for his second touchdown. football for a moment in the belly of Anthony Johnson pulled it back in and it just fell back across the goal line for the touchdown extra point by Craig Hendricks Notre Dame now with 28 points on the board Bill Bradley once wrote a book called a sense of where you are and Tony Rice has that sense this was play was supposed to go outside he gets banged inside. He knows he only has a yard to go for the end zone, and then he just pushes his way through it. Again, it's supposed to go outside. Good penetration in there. Looked like it was Kidwell. Forced Rice to adjust, and adjust he did for the touchdown. It's a guy who plays with a smile on his face. Leading rusher for this team, and today, he is once again 20 carries, 91 yards, two touchdowns. He's moving in on 800 yards rushing for the season. Tomorrow, join us for the NFL today, starting at 12:30. Boy, George Seifert's quite a story out there in San Francisco. Job he's done this year, taking over for Bill Walsh. There's the regional action, the four o'clock games. Regional coverage, some will see the Cards and the Rams or Green Bay against those 49ers. Mikowski still questionable for that game. How about Joe Montana? He is on a streak. Six touchdown passes the last two weeks. I think he's getting better. I think Montana's getting better. Hendricks kick away. Short will bounce around. Samuels must be careful. And it's actually fielded by O.J. McDuffie. Ball got held up in the wind, fell short. Let's go to John Dockery. Doc? Jim Nance, I don't know if you can see behind me Jim Dieter's ankle. They're working on it there. It's his right ankle. They're taking off the tape, and they had to cut off part of his shoe and the tape. Um, so I doubt if we're going to see him back. I haven't gotten any official report, but it is his right ankle. They're working on it right now. Back to you guys. Well, Doc, it was interesting. Todd Berger replaced Dieter in that last series, and again, Tony Rice ran right over where Dieter would have been for the touchdown. First and 10 from the 21. Blair Thomas. Good gain, tackled by Kowalkowski. You know, Penn State trails 28 to 10, and they have about eight and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter when they have the win. If they're going to throw the football, now is the time to do it because it's going to be very difficult to do it in the fourth quarter. Tom Bill came in in the final two minutes of the second quarter, relieving the starter, Tony Saka. He has not thrown his first pass of the game. Again, he's flushed out of the pocket and runs for good yardage. Todd Light finally bumps him out near midfield. This Tom Bill, the team loves him. They say he's a Jim McMahon type leader, will butt helmets with the linemen, hangs out with them. He gains 20 on that play. And if they're going to get back in the game, it's going to be Tom Bill and Blair Thomas. Bill's going to have to come up with a couple of passes to a receiver, and Dave Daniels has been their big receiver. And then Blair Thomas is again going to have to carry a lot of the load. First down from the 48-yard line. Wishbone formation. McDuffie gets the carry. And a loss on the play of a yard. Jeff Alm makes the tackle. The snow will just come right in over that Nittany Mountain range. They've had the lights on since this morning. When we had to endure the first blizzard of the day blew through here after about an hour and then clear it up blue skies but back come the snow clouds second down bill pass to 
McDuffie, oh. and the reception is made. Boy, was that a nice catch by O.J. McDuffie. I'll tell you, fully extended. A lot of guys, when they dive for the ball like that, can't control it when they come down. That means he has a good grip on the ball when he dives out to catch it. It's a heads-up play. 14 yards on the play. Now one foot's got to come down. He's got possession. Clearly, he was in with the feet. This O.J. McDuffie, number 24, is just a sophomore from Gates Mills, Ohio. Big play man. Returned a punt this year for a touchdown. Dangerous on a re reverse. Now on first down, Bill looking to pass again with the protection. Now he'll run it. Bolkar hits him at the 35-yard line. Well, he, Tom Bill plays the position like he's a part fullback. I mean, he dances around back there if he can't find anything downhill. Then he'll take off. Pretty good coverage downfield here. And then Tom Bill here, and then he's just going to scramble. But again, give the coverage of Notre Dame some credit. Bill didn't force the ball, still trying to make something happen. Leroy Thompson in at fullback. Blair Thomas, the tailback. Second and seven. Thomas the first down. Chris Zorich made the tackle along with Juan Francisco. And a nice lead block by Dave Zott, number 79, the right guard who pulled out and adjusted on the run real well. Dave Zott has done a nice job, not only today, but this entire year, pulling, he gets real deep, and then he adjusts real well and picks up, picks up guys to block. Here's a guy, Dave Zott, who was a guard as a sophomore, a nose tackle last year as a junior, and returned to the offensive line this year. First and 10 from the 26. Play action fake into the line. Bill rifles complete to the nine yard line. 17 yards to Terry Smith. Boy, this ball was a frozen rope by Tom Bill. And he has some courage. He hangs back there in the pocket, and that's what his teammates like about him, all that courage. The ball was a little bit behind Smith, but a nice catch, but it starts with the protection. Roger Duffy, the center, is doing a nice job with the nose tackle. Monahan and Love and Flanagan, all the guys inside doing a nice job of protection. Just inside the 10, it's first and goal. momentarily and gets near the five lost his footing for just a second well we have talked Jim a lot about Notre Dame's offensive line but in this series the offensive line for Penn State has come alive and that time it was Mac McCart number 64 who really came around and cleared the way for Blair Thomas number 64 right there in your screen he did a great job of pulling with some depth Carton actually was at SMU when they were hit with the death penalty. Transferred up here. Second and goal. Faking. And now here comes the rush of Smigala. He gets away. McDonald's after him. And he's pushed out of bounds by Don Grimm. Maybe they should play him at fullback. And nose tackle. An offensive guard. He can play a lot of play places. Boy, Smigala was on him quickly, wasn't he? Yeah, Stan Smagala is a guy, Jim, that, you know, we have seen other teams tell us they think they can pick on Stan Smagala. I'll tell you, when they do, uh, he always seems to answer the bell, both in the run and the pass. Senior from Burbank, Illinois, played high school football with Tim Grunhard, who's made some good plays at St. Lawrence High School. It's now timeout on the field, called by Penn State. They face third and goal from the three, trailing 28 to 10. Final five minutes, quarter number three. Evening in the rolling hills and beautiful countryside in the middle of the state of Pennsylvania. Notre Dame and Penn State at Beaver Stadium. Second largest crowd ever here as the number one ranked team in the country came to town today. They lead it 28-10, but the home folks are looking for a score here. It's third and goal from the three. Pat, you have to figure Penn State looks at it as two downs to get the three yards. They absolutely need the touchdown. You have to think they're going to give it to their best back, Blair Thomas, and see if his offensive line can clear the way. Ned Bolkar versus Blair Thomas, I would think. Thomas, the lone setback. They go with Blair. 
And he fights his way in for the touchdown. Now will they go for two? Well, he has sent out Tarassi. Now here comes Ray Tarassi leaving the sideline and onto the field. 28-16 is the score. Blair Thomas, his second touchdown of the day. Both touchdowns of the Nittany Lions. Extra point is good. Well, Jim, we said Blair Thomas and Ned Volkar were going to be the matchup to watch. 47 in the middle of your screen, and Blair Thomas just squeezes through right past, right through the tackle of Volkar. 17. Notre Dame and Penn State have exchanged touchdowns in the third quarter. Penn State about to kick the football away to the Irish. Rocket Ismail standing at the 14-yard line. They break out of the huddle and kick it quickly. Bounces around the Rocket looking for the handle. Now was a knee down at the 10. Yeah. Well, I think he should be ruled down at the 10. He will be down at the 10. Now, here comes another official over to say the knee was down. And they'll spot it at the 10-yard line. But a clever play by Joe Paterno's kickoff team. Has possession, not there. When he gains possession, he's down on the right knee. Clearly, he is down. But a clever play. They, they never spread out in the kick formation. Smile shakes the tackle of Thomas and gets the first down at the 23 yard line. Tackled by Todd Berger. What Ismail is, is both fast and elusive and strong. A lot of guys are fast but not terribly elusive, but Ismail is. I'm telling you, they were backed up to the 10. The student body of Penn State at their backs. And you could just see the smile on the face of Tony Rice. Now on first down again, it's Ricky Waters. Waters steps out at the 30. Nice play by Sherrod Range, the free safety, where Waters goes maybe for another 10, 15 yards. Two plays, however, Notre Dame is able to advance the football 21 yards and get out of that jam. Sherrod Range, the free safety. A lot of guys play that position with speed. He plays the free safety position on anticipation. Eilers and Tony Smith, the receivers, second and short. Rocket, Ismail runs into one of the officials. Oh, if the umpire's not there, maybe Ismail goes. He's got six carries today, 65 yards. Watch the umpire right there in the middle of the screen. If he gets out of the way, Ismail makes a different cut. He cuts to his right and maybe is gone. But even the umpire can't get out of his way. <laughs> First and 10 from the 40. a quick burst by Rodney Culver up front. And Culver gets to the 46-yard line of Penn State. 14 yards on the carry by Culver. If you've just joined us, boy, a lot more scoring than many anticipated. Thomas scoring in the first quarter, giving Penn State the edge. Rice back with a score to not at seven. Tarassi's field goal put Penn State in front, 10-7. Ricky Waters on a 12-yard scamper, 14-10. Anthony Johnson on a fourth down play scored from the one. And then Tony Rice, his second touchdown. Blair Thomas matched Rice, his second touchdown of the day. 28-17 is the score. And first down, Rice. He'll go over 100 yards rushing with that effort. 
He gets to the 36-yard line. Tony Rice has his best days in big games. And he's having another one today. 21 carries, 101 yards rushing, and two touchdowns. And it's been a day of offensive linemen, particularly for Notre Dame, who have dominated the line of scrimmage. And fullback Anthony Johnson, who's also blocked extremely well and run awfully tough inside. Two-week power drive for the nation's number one ranked team. Penn State today at Miami next week. First and ten. And a give to Ismail. To the 26-yard line. This drive started at their own 10-yard line, and Notre Dame just full steam ahead. And that time it was Ryan and Mike Brennan, the weak side guard and tackle, leading the way. These offensive linemen don't get caught off at the line, close to the line of scrimmage when they're pulling with defensive linemen. They get deep, and they got plenty of room to make the blocks for Ismail and Waters. I don't know if you saw one of those scores. The Doxter's got to be happy. Harvard won yeah. the game today against Yale. He's wearing his Harvard tie I saw earlier. Second and one. And Waters picks up the first. He got to the 25-yard line. Sean Wolf on the tackle. Matt Baggett came up from free safety to help out. Waters moving in on 100 for the day. Nowhere on an, on an offensive football team is coordination more necessary than in the offensive line. And what we have seen here today with Notre Dame is guys knowing exactly what the guy next to him in the offensive line is going to do. Tremendous communication in that offensive line. Well, they've been running. Have they set him up for a pass? Or do they stay with the ground? It's been so effective for him. Eilers right. Ismail slot right. Run the option. And in there, immediately down by Berger, is Rice. It's Brian Chismore, I think, number 28, who was in there as well. Never able to get that option left yeah. going. Here's more one of those productive guys. You know, you don't notice him much. You look at the end up at the end of the game, and he's got 15 tackles. A loss of a yard of a play. Third and 11. A second and 11. Waters bouncing around for only two. Hey, this Todd Berger, number 67, has been on a, on a lot of plays and stepping in for the injured Jim Dieter. Well, he has, and what he has done is gotten off the ball incredibly quickly. He's not waiting around, only a freshman, but he's not waiting around. He's getting off the ball very, very quickly. In on three tackles, Dieter again out with the ankle that John Dockery reported he will not be back today. Now it's third down, third down and nine. Culver comes in, replacing Anthony Johnson at fullback. Final minute of the third quarter. And Rice throws complete right at the first down yardage. It's Pat Eilers. Pat Eilers has not dropped a pass in two years. They don't throw the ball to him much. He's very much a role player. They use him to block. But this ball is right on the numbers from Rice to Eilers. And watch how he comes back to the ball. You know, he started, Eilers started at Notre Dame as a defensive back. But they said they needed a tough physical guy to be able to block at wide receiver, and he has done that all season long. Well, he knew where he had to get for the first down. He starts for him at split end. That's only his fifth catch of the year. Tackled right away. Rodney Culver. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Notre Dame 28. Penn State 17. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by Visa. Accepted at nearly 7 million places worldwide. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Michelob Drive. Bold taste with no aftertaste. Mick Dry refreshes completely. 
Welcome back to Frigid Beaver Field. It's Notre Dame by 11. Hard to believe as hot as this game has been. The wind chill factor now minus two degrees, Jim and Pat. A critical, critical series, critical play right now. Second and 10 for the Penn State defense. Back to you guys. Penn State trailing 28-17. Irish on the drive again. Coming right into that end zone where the student body is waiting for him. Anthony Johnson picks up only about three. It'll be third and six. Collins on the tackle. And while we have a moment, let's get an update on what's happening in college football with Greg Gumbel. Greg. Well, Jim, Virginia needs a win for a share of its first ever ACC title. Marcus Wilson goes in from three yards out, and with under 10 minutes to play in the first half, Virginia and Maryland are tied at 14. Back to Happy Valley. And I'll tell you, you can ask Penn State about Maryland. Terrapins tied them last week at 13. Now, big third down play. Third and six. ahead with Johnson and he's going to be a little bit shy of the first down I tell you it is ugly in there running that ball through the middle but I tell you Anthony Johnson runs ugly awfully well <laughs> Man. fourth down in less than a yard and after thinking about it Blue Holt sends in the field goal unit State needs a big play out of their special teams. A block. Make something happen here. Sexton on the hold for Billy Hackett. This will be a 22-yard attempt straight away. Right in the middle of the field. Hackett's kick. It's good. Good from the right side. In the right side. And uh, that has to be somewhat of a victory there for the Penn State defense. They stay within two scores at 31-17. Let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Jim Nance, you and Pat Hayden have been talking a lot about Anthony Johnson while I'm with his uh, mother, Marty, and uh, you were telling me an interesting story about Anthony Johnson, one of his boyhood heroes, actually went to Penn State. That's right, John Capaletti, number 22, and he's always had that number, so he's really like John Capaletti. Did Anthony ever think about going to Penn State? No, they recruited him, but his heart's never been at Penn State. He's just like John Capaletti. What did it come down to in terms of colleges for him? It really came down to the wire with Michigan and, and Notre Dame, and, and he opted for the Irish, and we're excited about that. You must be a proud mom. We've been really excited. The Lord has blessed him with so many talents, and we've been blessed by it, too, so it's been exciting. Well, we've certainly enjoyed watching him play. Congratulations. Now back to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, you know, Doc and Jim, he plays a lot like John Capaletti, and I don't think those 47 yards that he has had rush really tell the story because those have all been very tough yards when they needed him on third down primarily, and he's blocked extremely well, too. John Capaletti won Heisman Trophy, of course, here at Penn State, 73. Great player he was. A teammate of yours yeah. at the Rams. Hendrick. Driving kick, McDuffie backpedals and slips. He's got a ball. Oh, the ball. He, need, he hit the yeah. ground with his knee at the four-yard line. He was down, really at the three, I guess you could call it. Well, just a moment ago, the Kodak coaches. All-America team was announced, and at quarterback, Major Harris, Thompson and Smith, the running backs, no rocket on this team. Clarkston Hines and Terrence Mathis from New Mexico. Here you see the offensive line. Garten from Colorado's had a big year. Yake, the Jake Young is the center from Nebraska. We'll show you the All-America coaches All-America defense in a moment. First and ten from the three. Blair Thomas. It's up nine. Close to a first down. A little more than nine yards. And Blair Thomas, 20 carries, 83 yards today. And two touchdowns. Boy, everybody in the stadium, and particularly the defensive players, know that Blair Thomas is going to get the ball this part of the field. But a terrific hole on the right side. Dave Zott in particular and McCartan cleared the way for Blair Thomas. And again, that vision. He just picks those holes and finds the soft spot. Second and less than one. 
Leroy Thompson picks up the first down. Well, he actually slides forward to the 18-yard line. Now the coaches All-America team on defense, Greg Mark from Miami. And look at the rest. Mo Gardner makes it at nose tackle ahead of Chris Zorich. Linebackers, Percy Snow, Keith McCants, James Francis. Carrier, Todd Light from Notre Dame. The lone player from Notre Dame to make the coaches All-America squad. First and 10, Blair Thomas. Tackled from behind by Jeff Alm, and a loss on the play. What did you think of that team, Pat? Well, I am just shocked that Chris Zorich did not make it at nose tackle. I mean, he has had an incredible year. That man, number one, Todd Light, deserved to be on the team with eight interceptions. He's played awfully well. Guards, always the best receiver on the opposition. But I don't know how you keep Chris Zorich off the team. I'll give you another stat. Notre Dame has won 22 in a row. Last year, they did not have one member of their team make first team coaches All-America. This year, only one. And Lou Holtz has not been named coach of the year either year. So how are they winning? Here's the pass by Bill. Incomplete intended for Dave Jacob. You know, the interesting point, Jim, I think everybody just assumes that Lou Holtz gets more talent than anybody in America. And he gets some good players, but you have to do something with them once they get there. And he's done a pretty good job of coaching some talented players. Instead of his kind of games, Magala, he loves to get out there, get dirty. Dolls tip some passes to up today. He's been a big tipper today, <laughs> unlike yourself. Now you beat me to it. <laughs> third, third and long, and Bill stiff arms one defender. Oh, the old fate. Oh, he's going to pick up the first, but he stays on his feet. He does. Remember the old fake in um, the grammar school on the sand lots where you fake you're going to throw it and the defensive guy jumps up? Well, that's what Tom Bill did there to Ned Volkar. Watch him. He come down. He's going to break through a couple of tackles. Does his Joe cap. Gives him the old Heisman there. And then the old fake. Volkar goes up and right through the tackle. You can see why your teammates, his teammates, like Tom Bill as their leader. Well, he's the pocket and run for 47 yards on six attempts. 31-17, Notre Dame and Blair Thomas on the first down carry picks up only a yard. Well, what about the Heisman story? Let's get an update on that situation as we go back to Greg Gumble. Well, Jim, one of the contenders has had a busy day today, and that's Indiana running back Anthony Thompson, one of the members of that coach's All-American team against Illinois today. 24 carries, 96 yards, no touchdowns in the first half as the Illini lead Indiana 28-14. to 14.